idea. Focus, think results. Plan and schedule. Again, I come back to this slide. Content marketing is a commitment. It's not a campaign. So it's not a one-stop deal, one-shop deal. You've got to consistently do content marketing. Here's a schedule. Um, most companies have schedules. There's a lot of companies out there that don't, but it's important to schedule your plan. You know, plan your work and work your plan is one of the mottos that I live by. And they say, the famous quote is, if you, um, you fail to plan, then you basically plan to fail. And so you really want to plan out your strategy. You want to think about perhaps some of the keywords that you're going after. Um, here it talks about different articles with different trends around content. So you probably have different theme groups of content. And then here's week one, week two, week three, week four, month two, week five, week six. So it's really important not only to plan out and schedule the content strategy, but to measure it and see what's working. Sometimes you may need to shift the con content strategy as you find that something is working better than something else. But consistency is key aside from bringing life to the content and bringing value to the content. Goals. It's really important when you're working with a client and you're working with you know, scheduling and you're working with your company is to have some kind of key metrics for success. So when we work with somebody, what we do is we look for like a return on an investment or what we call a KPI, which is a key performance indicators. And we wanna look at what are, what are their goals as a company? So do they wanna increase traffic? Do they wanna increase ranking? And we talk about that with our clients to get the best outcome. For some clients, they want to increase their reputation online and they want to increase positive branding. For other clients, they're more concerned about the ranking than they are the traffic. For some people, they want more traffic than ranking. So it's really important to align with the goals that you have for the company that you're working with because if you don't know any of those key performance indicators, then you're just working in the dark. You know, I remember um, we had talked to one company and they said, well, we really, don't, we really don't need business from the internet. We're not really trying to attract people to our website. We're just trying to do online branding. So you have to listen to what people want and then you have to align with their goals as well. So. So that's um, basically um, some of the stuff. Now, what we're going to do right now is we are going to open up for uh, some questions, and I'm going to ask Peter to come back on. Hey, I'm right here. Thank you so much, you. That was okay. Great. Cool. All right. Thank you so much for your time, friends. Thank you again for um, just um, a nice high-level presentation, an introduction to this really nice perspective on all things content marketing. So there's so much you can be doing. I'm going to go ahead and take back screen control. So don't worry about that, Hugh. I got you. Um, okay. Yup. Where do we go? Where do we go? I'm going to go and show my screen here, friends. Where is it? Hey, there it is. What are we doing? Um, so yes, friends, once again, that was It Lives, how to breathe life into your content. So just so many things you can be doing in the content marketing game. So thank you so much for sticking with us to the triumphant finish. Um, we finally have the slide deck from this uploaded to our handout section here on GoToWebinar. So if you want to go ahead and grab that and take it with you, by all means, go ahead. It's right there in the handout section. Just download the PDF and you've got all those slides with you as well. Just so you know, we do have some offers in conjunction with this webinar. Uh, Hugh did mention how you can use SCMrush to research keywords, find out your competitive space, and find out exactly what content you can be writing, what keywords resonate with your um, with your audience, with your potential audience. And that sort of thing is really, really helpful in the content writing game. It takes researching and writing content and promoting it and making it one massively functional step. Um, and we have plenty more webinars on how you can do that uh, specifically. But let's just go ahead and friends and see if you're interested in this. If you want this link here, if you want to get a free 15-day trial of our Guru plan, SEMrush Guru, by all means, I'll send that to y'all. Um, so it's going to go ahead and do a quick poll here, though, friends, just to see what everyone's interested in. At the same time, I think an idea is 
an SEO and content marketing company. They have a, they have an amazing staff. They have a really solid group of friends. So friends, just let me know what what would you like to receive more information on? Would you like to hear more about a free 15 day trial of SEO Merch Guru? Would you like to hear about the great services over at I Think and Idea? Would you like to hear about both of those things? Or would you like to hear about neither of them? Go ahead and let me know what you want to hear more about, friends. I just want to make sure we give everyone the information they'd like to receive. Uh, again, everyone, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Hugh, thank you so much for donating so much of your time and giving us, again, your really solid perspective on content marketing, a really high end thing. And I can't wait to drill down and get more specific with you as we go through, because while you've given us the entire universe here in content marketing, there's so many actionable insights contained within it. And I'm just so happy to have that. So folks, thank you so much for voting so quickly. I'm going to go ahead and close this poll for y'all. And we're going to jump right into just, hey, friends, just so you know, to, uh, on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about how to take the same idea, content marketing, and we're going to apply that success across all marketing channels with our friends from W Promote, an amazing e-com service. So, friends, on Wednesday, we're going to be talking, talking the talk, applying digital marketing success across marketing channels with Michael Moffner, CEO of W Promote, which is an amazing up-and-comer in the e-commerce and digital marketing scene. So, dudes... If all my e-com friends, all 15% of us who hung out till the end, check that out. It's going to be a really solid time. But let's get into the actual meat of this, friends, our questions. So I just have a couple because everyone was just hanging out, doing um, some solid, just note-taking. So first, um, from Elliot, hey, uh, Hugh, do you have a source for that statistic? Um, the statistic about 95% of people retain the message of a video as opposed to 10% retain from what they read. Uh, do you have a source for that statistic, Hugh? Um, I can I can send it over um, Definitely. to you. I inserted it in the slide, but I do have a source for that. Awesome. And now the thing the thing about this presentation, Hugh, is is that everyone wants to do this. It's just a lot of our a lot of our audience is a bunch of small fries, like a bunch of people. Not small fries. That sounds so demeaning. A bunch of one-man shows, a bunch of people who are doing an amazing job getting their business out by themselves. We got a lot of owners here, and when they say content marketer, they mean I'm just one guy of like a two-person team and trying to get the entire message out while I got a friend who's just coding the website or something. So the question becomes, I don't, how do I even do all this? The question becomes, what parts of your marketing would you consider to be outsourceable? What do you... What to what degree would you trust a third party to do these things for you? So at what point can I like have a blog and have it completely at, be outsourced? Can I just get blog content from a content marketing agency? What what do you think, you? On the outsourcing? Yeah. Well, from from experience, um, you really have to inspect what you expect, and when it comes to outsourcing. It's really important to have like some form of QA or quality. Um, you know, I just like any kind of company, whether you hire employees or whether you outsource, it's the same realm of going through the numbers and finding someone that aligns with the messaging of your company and is a good fit. They're also good communicators. They understand your messaging, your product, and what you're trying to convey. One of the things I see with outsourcing is it, it can be really positive in some respects as far as keeping your overhead down as a smaller business. However, you do want to inspect what you expect and you want to make sure that you have the best possible person that's representing your company because if you lose one of your biggest sales because you outsourced to somebody and they didn't get the messaging right and I mean, we all don't know what that one lost customer may have cost us. And so what I would do is I would go with a reliable company that understands your product or service, or at least if they don't understand your product or service, they're really good at communicating. They're really good at listening to what you're trying to convey through your content and through your strategies. And, and finding someone that's a good fit. You know, it's like any relationship. Sometimes things don't fit the right way and you have to find somebody else that's a better fit. Mm -hmm. with uh, the employees of your company or someone that's directing your marketing campaign. You just want to make sure you have a good alignment with them and that they're going to make the best impression for your company. Right. I've seen some people outsource and try to save money, and if they add up all the hours it cost them late at night between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. and the stress it had on their relationship and then the fact that they had to redo things five or six times, 
it probably cost them 10 times the amount than the money that they saved by outsourcing. So just be really careful that you're really looking at the whole perspective when it comes to outsourcing. Like, mm -hmm. what's it cost me? Not only just in money, but in time, because that time could be generating more business for you, especially if you're a small business and you're the guy that's answering the phone, you're your director of operations, you're the director of the content strategy, and you're also hiring your employees, then mm -hmm. you don't have a whole lot of time. I think sometimes it's more effective to spend the money with the right person that's going to get you better results than to try to be like a master of none. Yeah. The, the most important thing is to have that desire to shop around. Like it can be really right. stressful finding somebody to outsource to, but that's the whole thing. It's about relationship marketing and content marketers know that very well. So don't be afraid to ask questions of a, of a content marketing like agency sales team. Get inside the minds. It's, a, it's of a sorting game. It's just like definitely not a fit. Yeah. So that that's the whole point. Um, I do have one more very specific question, which may very well be the best question that has ever been asked in SCMrush webinar history. Um, <laughs> I'm just excited to get into this myself. Like I just want to like do a whole webinar on this subject. But Elvis has asked us, do you have any advice for the content marketing strategy here? So just some quick like quick and dirty specific tips. Do you have any advice? for plumbing service companies. So Elvis has got a plumbing services company here. Sounds like a dull topic, but really there's no such thing as a dull topic, only you know dull marketers. Can you give any specific content advice on how he can perhaps market his plumbing service, plumbing supply brand, so pipes yeah, and first, stuff? When you said Elvis, I was gonna say, well, I love me tender. And uh, you know, cause I remember looking at some of those Elvis songs, but mm -hmm. that was just a joke by the way, guys. <laughs> and. Uh, well, with plumbing, yeah, plumbing is not the most exciting thing where you jump up in the morning and go, yeah, i got to get a plumber. And uh, when it comes to plumbing, I think what you need to do is, when it comes to marketing in general, I'm going to talk generality and then I'll talk about plumbing. But you have to do something that's different than the norm. And when people do things that are different, you stand out of the crowd. And so with plumbing, first thing is look at your competitors and see, the add value and some of the benefits that they're sharing. The second thing is you got to look at your company and go, what's special about our company? What's a flavor, a color, a passion that our plumbing service has that we want to use as an overall strategy or an overall message? The other thing that you want to talk about is some of the benefits of hiring a good plumbing service versus a bad one. So. We all know plumbing is not exciting, but it's it's sprinkling those stories in there like how this plumbing service saved my life or how this plumbing service, you know, made my date night amazing, you know, with my wife or tying in different things that capture people on an emotional level. And, you know, I'm even happy to look at that for you. And I was telling Peter, I was like, hey, if anybody has questions on this webinar, I am more than happy to communicate and, and send you guys ideas or share some perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, you're free to email me at hugh at I think an idea .com. But looking at plumbing, you know, some imagery on your plumbing service, perhaps some really compelling images um, that have to do with that emotional sense when it comes to plumbing. And then Looking at some of the keywords, I mean, I could do some keyword research on plumbing and then come up with probably a couple of storylines along the lines of plumbing and some different strategies that we could run. And then with those stories, with those images, and with that overall feel on what you're trying to get across. Mm -hmm. But when you're writing that content for plumbing, you want to think about, well, everybody that searches on Google, they're just coming up with best plumbing service. How can you make your content stand out and be different, have a unique feel, have something that really calls people into it? Maybe it's a catchy phrase or a catchy story or so-and-so's plumbing service saving millions of dollars. You know, maybe, maybe that plumbing service actually saved the whole house being flooded. You know, so you can create some really dramatic content around that. You can create some great emotional content that has to do with how that plumbing service made your life easier. Nightmares of a plumber. You know, there, there, there's a lot of really different creative things that you could do with that.
Right. And as a supply company, too, I imagine that uh, Elvis will be selling to plumbers directly as well. And if that's the case, um, my go-to strategy would be education, like talking about if you've got a new thing, a new pipe or fitting or epoxy or whatever in stock, like teaching people how to use it, teaching new and interesting techniques. I mean, uh, if you own this company, you have to know something or another about how to plumb. So um, I found the best way to teach to inspire trust is to have that bond of education and i could be biased because i was a, a english and biology teacher like in asia for a while so education's always in my go-to sort of thing i don't know what you think about that hugh but that's my idea no i um think i just lost connection with you i, to I totally agree i think that when people are less plumber or how to find the best plumbing supplies, you know, if, if they're a supplier. We use like SlideShare, we use different decks that educate people on the benefits. In fact, one of our one of our clients, they did something, um, I, I, I guess maybe so in the boring vertical that wasn't that exciting. And we actually came up with a whole picture infographic on Pinterest and it actually got ranked um, on the first one at first and second page of Google very quickly because it was very helpful, it was very mm -hmm. educated to the, the viewers and it got a lot of traffic and it got a lot of engagement. So infographics are really good because they embody visuals and they also embody the content all within in one. Mm -hmm. And it's something you can also share on social media. So uh, even as people look to make buying decisions online, you know, some people go after very broad keywords. And some of the things that we found work really well is actually targeting some of the long tail buying keywords like hire a plumber or hire a plumber in New York or purchase supplies for plumbing because those people are, have their buying sunglasses on with their credit cards ready to go and you want to show up where people are going to give you money, especially if you have a business and you want to be profitable. So think about some of the things that you can tie in your content strategy to get not just lots of traffic but the right traffic. Right. That's really that's really a good point to end on here. Thanks so much for that, Hugh. Um, that brings us to the end of the questions. Everyone else is just kind of furiously taking notes as you basically glossed, basically high-ended the entire universe that is content marketing. So Hugh, I just, want to, I just want to thank you again for just basically touching on the whole universe here. That was really that was really solid, man. I really appreciate your time. Everyone else who's still here, all my friends who've stayed towards the triumphant finish, thank you as well for donating all your time to us today. I really appreciate it. Um, Friends, just so you know, uh, SE Rush Webinars is produced, hosted, directed, and everything by me, Peter Star Northrop. Our content marketing team is helmed by Tara Clapper and Kathleen Garvin and Philip K. Brooks. Um, our amazing social media team that kept uh, hashtag SCM Rush, uh, SCM Rush Live going for so long. That's Olga and Liza over in our European office. Uh, it's the seventh birthday here for us at SCM Rush. We just want to thank all of our users who've stuck with us throughout our webinar process. You know, just thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you for your time so much. We would be nothing without you. Um, and as always, friends, thank you so much for your time. And I'd like to leave you with peace, love, and competitive intelligence. Everyone have a lovely morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you are. Thank y'all so much. Hugh, thanks again. You have a great day, all right? All right. Thank you. You have a great day, too. Yeah, be well.